Thank you so much for joining us at the very first Psychedelic Science Expo put on by Mace Media and the CBD Tour. I'm pretty excited. Okay. Cannabis people yell and shout and clap. I would expect that psychedelics people could thank you. Thank you, Propane Jane. <laughs> Before I let the smartest people in the room talk, you and I will have a conversation. We'll just forget about them for a second. Um, how many people in here um, have an interest in cultivating mushrooms, psychedelic mushrooms? Okay, the AV guy's got his hand way up. He's like, I'm getting paid to be here. This is unbelievable. <laughs> this is so much better than the Hotel Beverage Association Conference. Um, okay, so everybody is interested. How many people um, are currently cultivating mushrooms, hypothetically? Okay, it's like half of you have already jumped in. Uh, how many people are currently successfully? All right. Oh, you know what? God bless you for both your confidence and your awareness of your own limitations. <laughs> so um, I love this panel. I love this panel. And um, obviously, they're going to speak for themselves. And I'm, I'm going to shut up here pretty quick. But if you if you kind of go from... Um, right here on down, you see a spectrum of the life of fungus, starting with genetics, breeding, isolating strains, creating strains, important technical work, cultivation that sort of bridges that, genetics work here in the middle with Daisha, and then lots of cultivation work with Laurel. So you, can't, you see this progression in the life of these amazing not plants, not animals. And um, I can't wait to have the conversation. So please help me welcome my panelists today. That's when you clap. Yep. <laughs> and, um, and I'm gonna start, cause I, I gotta start ladies first. So I'm gonna start with Laurel and come back down this way. And could you just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. My name's Laurel. I'm from Colorado Springs. I grew up as a Mormon. That's an interesting part of my history, which plays a very interesting role in my life now, having got away from that and into what I'm into now. And I spent a lot of my life driving truck. I got my commercial helicopter pilot's license. Obviously, I'm a trans woman. That is another huge part of my life and existence. And got into mushrooms, learned how to cultivate the mushrooms, and decided real quick, or learned real quick, how important it was to educate people on how to do it, how to do it properly, educate people on proper use of the medicine. And so that's my main focus now, is education of cultivation. Thank you. Daisha. My name is Daisha Boning. I am a cannabis professional and um, I specialize in the extraction of cannabis uh, concentrates, but I also am a mushroom cultivar. And in that, I kind of specialize in helping people develop protocols for microdosing um, and give them the tools and the mushrooms they need to do that pro bono. I'm Dom A otherwise known as Doma by some of my peers out there. The legend. <laughs> founder, I'm founder of Magic Myco, as well as uh, Myco Coil, which is a new sterilizer tool that I just patented. And um, I'm a genetics breeder. I'm also a cultivator. I also, um, I, I teach people online. I'm an entrepreneur and um, my main thing is the genetics and um, genetic splicing mm. so and I, isolations. I want to start right there. I want to start with genetics. We're because... also the winner of the first psilocybin cup. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Title word. Okay. Pretend like you didn't just hear that because I had a whole thing planned around that and I'm going to go with it. Okay. Mm. Um, I, I was watching the work that um, 
Reggie from uh, Oakland High Fay is doing unbelievable work lifting up the lifting up this space, lifting up the community, lifting up this industry. Um, highly focused on testing. He put together the very first ever psilocybin cup. The only criteria was uh, potency, psilocybin and psilocin potency. Uh, Doma won for his strain that he designed, engineered, cultivate bread. Yes. Okay, that. See, it's not a plant, it's not an animal, it's weird to talk about. Um, so I, I reserve the right to be corrected at any moment. Um, but he uh, bred Tidal Wave, submitted that. His psilocin psilocybin results weren't just a little higher than the next closest one. It was like 30% higher than the next closest one. So it's kind of a historic thing. And uh, I'm super excited. So let's hear it for uh, Myco Magic and Tidal Wave. Thank you, Thank you. Um, Thank you. On that, Laurel, you cultivate for therapeutic use. So you work closely with a psychedelic assisted therapist and you're cultivating specifically for that use. Tell me about adopting a new strain. So when somebody like Doma says, I've got this new strain I want you to try, what are some of the things that you need to think about before you decide whether or not you even want to cultivate that new strain? For one, I want to have an understanding of what its potency is, so I know when I'm administering it, or when someone who is administering it to someone has an understanding of how it's going to affect them. And if I'm looking for a new strain to cultivate, I want something that is going to be reliable, that's going to colonize quickly, have a quick turnaround time, because I, I have cultivated some strains that take two months to just to start pinning and those are they're not really worth your time to mess with sometimes depending on what the outcome is you're after if you just want to produce the medicine and you need to produce it reliably and fast then I want a strain that's going to produce well mm -hmm. reliably Daisha you work closely with Doma and you're kind of the middle of this breeding cultivation you're sort of our you're the place where all the colors come together in the ombre and it's a special place um so how do you as you're providing feedback to doma how do you what are some of the criteria you use to say like this strain doesn't feel stable isn't performing right what how do we optimize what are, what is your role there how do you provide feedback well i think that um first of all um i'm really fortunate in that uh, doma's provided all of us that are in his classes, uh, a platform. So we have a platform where uh, we can talk about absolutely everything from start to finish. From you know the growing, we get the, the genetics or the strains, and everybody does it differently. Everybody does it differently. Here, that's my girl. And um, so in the classroom with all of the people, we use different substrates, we use different strains, uh, we use the same strains and we change it up. We have all different processes. And so it's almost like a business incubator, mm -hmm. you know, where um, you have, you know, this, everybody trying to do the same thing, but in all their different ways. So really, we have a lot of data and, um, and it's just getting better and more structured um, each month that goes by with each project. Um, so I'm really fortunate to have that. Um, so you get a lot of feedback. Here. There's a lot of work lot going of on to so get a lot sure. of feedback. And a lot of sharing and it's yeah. really open and nobody is, um, you know, that IT joke where IT people like to keep all that information to themselves, yeah. right? And they don't like to share how they fix anything, but it's the opposite. Everybody there is really open and really close and they share everything. So I'm just really lucky that way. Tell me, tell me about Doma, tell me about creating a community like that. What what is part of creating that community? Obviously, you, you started out wanting to educate people, but talk to me about what that's like as that's grown. Um, can I just can I just reference one? Absolutely. Thing? Um, that does provide me a lot of valuable feedback. Having the team and also the community out there who grows my strains, and I see how it's performing for them under a range various range of conditions, and I see that it's working out for them. But also, that's why the testing is so important because of the numbers and it's actual hard data and mm -hmm. that's what we really need. We need both, we need both. Mm -hmm. We need people testing in the community like we have and um, the community 
growing it and the testing both as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. so. Talk to me about some of the challenges around testing. Some of the challenges around testing? Mm -hmm. Well, right now there's, there's not a lot of it going on and it's mm -hmm. very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it's two things. You can't find a test lab who has the standards to test what you want. Um, you can't send it to somebody because they probably won't receive it if they're a lab. You know what I mean? There's all the problems of what you're handling. And um, those tests are expensive when you purchase them if you can find a lab. And then getting yourself set up to be your own lab is expensive mm -hmm. and requires training, requires maintenance, requires very expensive inputs and consumables. So it's, I mean, it's a whole project in and of that, itself. That's what's so great about the community is uh, different people have different niches and they, they have different fields and different things. Like one person can't do everything. That's impossible. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like I like sticking to the genetic side. Then I have my team out there does the cultivation. We got people like Oakland Hyphe out in Oakland who are doing the testing. Yeah. And we all come together as a community. And that, that's the way it should be. That's the way we should keep it. Do you think in two years the, the single metric for the third annual psilocybin cup, um, do you think the single metric will be potency or do you think that there'll be more metrics? I think there'll be more metrics. Mm -hmm. I think there'll be more alkaloids, beta carbolin contents, MAIO. There'll be more in-depth reports for sure. Mm -hmm. And also, um, well, yeah, is that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Daisha, what are you making a note of over there? Oh, a couple of things. I was making notes earlier on the testing side. I think one of the, the biggest obstacles to the testing is that there's no way to test it. Mm -hmm. And until Oakland Hyphe opened up their, you know, their lab. We're just like that. Sorry. <laughs> um, you can make it closer to your, closer. Right. Be comfortable with it. Everybody has all the time in the world for that. Right. For Before I, Oakland Hyphe, there was no place to send your strains and get that information. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and it, you, it takes bravery too, because then you have, um, right now, um, underground cultivators have to step out into the light and, um, and expose themselves in order to start gathering this data. And that's gonna change over time. And it's really important, like you said, for um, using it in therapy, you need consistency. And consistency is really hard right now. But, and the biggest part is just, there's nobody to do it. And, and so, so it's just starting. Honestly, this is the time to get in. Um, business idea, business idea. Yeah, we need you more heard labs. it here first. Business idea, <laughs> but I. This is really interesting because I. I feel like with a lot of these conversations, it just is re recalling and recalling things we talked about. But as I was strong arm, as I was encouraging Laurel <laughs> to join us here today. Um, and to maybe be in front of everybody, which maybe is some people's favorite thing and not some other people's favorite thing. Um, but as I was bothering Laurel about this, she's like, you know, cool your shit. And she didn't say that. She was very polite. Um, but she's like, I don't even know if I should be up there with my face. Like, do I want to go into public, into a place where That's surely, I mean, sure, if somebody's not here from the federal government, I... I'll buy you, I'll buy the first round tonight. Um, but if <laughs> Adam raises a hand in the back. So, <laughs> but, but Laurel, speak to the conversations we had and like the ruminations you did about, do I want to go somewhere and get on a stage and say that I'm doing this? I find it first of all, completely ridiculous that anybody on this planet thinks they have any right whatsoever to regulate something that grows from the ground. Thank you. Amen. Just so, right there. Yes. Just <laughs> when you look at it from that basis, that there is no basis to regulate this. It's something that grows naturally that nobody ever had any right to even touch it in the first place. But it really sucks to, to be behind something that has so much power. There is so much power behind psilocybin and the ability to help people in ways that no other substance can. It has a therapeutic value that is so incredible. And there are so many people out there that could benefit from this if they could have access to it, if only they could have the easy access to it. And the problem about easy access is if we start to make it to where there is easy access, then more people take notice of it, corporations get a hold of it, we commercialize it, and I don't want to see that happen. But as far as the safety of it goes, it, it sucks that we have to be so careful right now with something that is so beneficial and is so natural, and we should be able to give it to the people who need it. Mm -hmm. It should be accessible, mm -hmm. and we shouldn't have to worry about 
our own freedoms just to provide people the medicine that they need that is so beneficial. Preach, girl. Preach. <laughs> That's so true. Daisha, you were making you were making a note. What were you thinking? Um, I was going to say she touched on um, accessibility, and I think that's another issue, you know, and I don't want to get into it, but I'm just saying it's another obstacle going from, you know, uh, genetics that are uh, consistent so we can then use them for therapy, but mm -hmm. also then accessibility. Um, and, you know, I only speak of it because I keep what I do very small. I produce just enough for my family and then the community of people that I've attached myself to or have come to me. Um, which is just under 30 people. And um, I keep it free on purpose. I just do what I can afford to do mm -hmm. um, for accessibility because a lot of these people wouldn't be able to afford to go to a dispensary for mushrooms and pay, you know, like $100 a month to microdose. Right, right. So that's another big fear going forward is, is accessibility. We touched a little bit on, you know, the, the progression of the industry. And I, Doma, I want you to speak about something that at first I think gives people the heebie-jeebies. So when you and I were first talking and, you know, free the plant, love the plant, everybody needs to be on mushrooms. And you said, I'm going to patent this strain. I was like, GW Pharma, what are you talking about right now? Mm -hmm. I'm not having it. And, you know, just like I'm coming from a place of cannabis where mother truckers are coming in and trying to like pick up this stuff and make it corporate and it and it's stinky pants but yeah. i don't think that that's what you have in mind so based on that really flattering introduction tell me about what it looks like when somebody patents a strain what does that look like and how is that not some weird monsanto thing that i don't want any part of the only strain that i'm aware of that's patented right now is cubensis by paul stamets mm -hmm. But substrains are not, and that is because of the testing. If you go to test any substrain cubensis on a PCR, it'll come back as cubensis. There's just not enough data mm -hmm. attached to tell the differences. Now, if you now if you can find and afford a place to run full genome se sequencing on all your work or the main ones that you want to go with, now you're talking millions of pieces of data and I mean you can have um, isolations that can be very stable and consistently come up with very few of those um, differentiate you know differentiate what points. is the advantage to you and then you could patent it okay and then when you patent it what does that mean explain it help me understand what that means well, see, the thing is, is once you give somebody your seeds or your, because um, this is Cubensis uh, and cannabis show, right? So once you have seeds or from fungi spores, once you give somebody your work or a clone or an isolation, that's it. They have your work. They have everything that you worked really hard for mm -hmm. and you just handed it over to them and they could just fruit it off agar with no nutrients, get one mushroom and send it in and win. Mm -hmm. So... That's what's so important to me about the results of this is not that we won, it's the numbers, the research, the data that we're getting back slowly mm -hmm. now, we're starting to get data back. And we wanna do it for all our strains, but also because the validation of the work that I've done for the past 45 years, mm -hmm. I feel that um, it really showed through on this one. So even, you know, there's gonna be a lot there's going to be a lot of testing going on now and mm -hmm. you know everybody's going to be prepared for all the next um competitions and shows and everything like that so everybody's going to up their game and um bring it you know so um yeah it's it's an exciting time to get into mushrooms for sure because it's going to go fast yeah it is going to go fast Stacia, what were you thinking i'm just um i have to agree with with Doma here. Um, I think that um, people forget and sometimes get really panicky in the beginning when things are, are big and they're about to get big that um, there's enough success out there for everybody. Yeah. There's money out there for everybody. and um, But it's important when you have scientists who've been working uh, for years and years on a project, something specific, they need a way to get credit for it mm -hmm. and um, um, some sort of monetary, you know, a way to, to make money off of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that in doing this, there's also then the data you can um, uh, 
start gathering that data and it's an important part of the process for consistency and numbers and treatment and actually just using that medicine. It doesn't keep people from using the medicine. It just gives, you know, mm -hmm. um, a way to track mm -hmm. the data, who it came from, where mm -hmm. it came from. And so I think it's, it's okay and that it's an important part of the process. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's going to derail like it, you know, the cannabis train derailed yeah. in a way that it's not accessible to a lot of people still, and there's still right. a lot of people suffering right. and being imprisoned and, right. you know, for something that corporations are making, you know, a shit ton of money for. Ooh, cannabis. <laughs> We're but, doing that. But I think that Dome is correct and um, that, you know, if he's been spending um, all of his time and years, mm -hmm. resources, um, his own funds. Um, no, I don't. I, I'm opening up the conversation. Sure. Because I had, I myself had a knee jerk reaction to the idea mm -hmm. and it didn't jive in my mind right. with everything I've seen from you because in my mind, it felt like the way people were taking advantage of cannabis and I wasn't seeing it as a way for you to, um, quantify your work that this genetic sequence is the work that I've done. And, and that is my work product and other people can grow it, but that's my work product. So, you know, that's about, I mean, I just feel really strongly about having the conversation and I, and I think that having an answer, I'm probably not, when you guys hear about patenting a strain, am I crazy or did you think what I was thinking? Okay. Do you hear what, do you, do you hear what, <laughs> do you hear, but do you hear what Doma's saying? And does that give you a different sense about it? about his intellectual property and what he's doing? Okay. okay. Coleman? Well, I mean, I think there's a big differentiation between domesticating a strain, going through the isolation process and putting it into real work, and then sitting on it trying to, you know, clap, clap the doors and, like, let no one in. And there's another thing to be said for having a patent and then releasing it. So you're able to ensure that that kind of thing doesn't happen with these monarchs grab it up and then put it on the back shelf mm -hmm. so they can either have their one strain that they you know, did their work on and force that into a line and crush everything else um, or just pull over it to begin with. And, and so, I mean, there is... And True. I, I do understand that. If that's your goal, you should wait. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If that's your goal, you should wait and not, not give us more. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Doma, what, is, what, are you, what are you thinking? Um... I'm thinking about um, honestly. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking about making new strains. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about <laughs> making new strains. Okay, when you make a strain, are you making it for the way it grows or the way it makes me feel, or both? I am just looking for the characteristics that I desire. Well, part of that should be the way it makes me feel. More people should be structuring their work which over part how of it, it makes me feel. Which part frankly. of my desire is the way it makes you feel and the point? Thank you. Just a part. But but how do you, uh, because there's different, okay, we've got psilocybin consumers in the room. I, I see a few. I know you. Okay. Um, different strains. You notice different feelings from different strains. Lots of nodding. Lots of nodding. Do you, are you, are you in a position by a show of hands, who has easy access to psilocybin right now? All you want, you can get it. It's not a problem. Everyone. Okay. The camera's got that? <laughs> um, who, who has the kind of access that's strain specific? Wow. Show offs. Who, who knows the psilocybin and psilocin? Oh, okay. All you magic Myco t-shirts, you quit raising y'all's hands. Um, who has, who has the kind of access where you see a COA or test results for psilocybin and psilocin content? Right. That was, that, that was, that was nobody, Daisha. So Daisha, how do we know as a consumer, how do I know, how do I know? What I'm getting, I for me personally, I know my cultivator. Sure. I'm not pointing at anybody. I didn't mean to point at anybody, but I know I know my cultivator. I know from whence that came. I don't always know the strain. To I think be that's changing right now. Mm -hmm. I think that in the past it was you know a plastic baggie that you get from someone who gave it to them, yeah. and it could have been sitting around for a year and a half. And we all know that psilocybin and not psilocin in my house. degrade 
greatly over time and in sunshine and other yeah. things. So you couldn't have consistency and you couldn't, you know, medicate with it or doing anything of value with it aside from side, you know, try to trip and and be successful or unsuccessful. And that even is bad, you know, when you're just trying to recreationally use it and it's not consistent can be a bad trip. So I think that that's changing with the testing, with people, people being able to document the genetics that they've been working on, you know, for traceability and other reasons. And I think that, um, you know, as long as we keep certain things in mind, like making sure that everyone can access it in some way and you have people that really care about it you know and will continue to care about it and mm -hmm. we have to let everybody just do it their own way you know and yeah yeah and but i think that um what doma does is important because uh, that's how we're going to get actual numbers yeah that's what it's all about that's why i release everything Mm -hmm. I, I just released everything. I want it to for And he for goes, he's always been very open everybody. with ever, all his work, you know, giving it away and sharing it. And well, and the classes build that platform, don't they? I mean, once once you have one spore, you have unlimited mushrooms forever, right? Mm -hmm. So the testing business, yes. Maybe the spore business is, I don't know, unless you're a genetics, unless you're a breeder, um, because once, because it's the breeding is different. Creating spores, I mean. It's lots of substrate companies. Yeah, substrate up. accessories. Um, a lot of gear, people with selling totes, I mean, you mm -hmm. name it, uh, filters, everything. Mm -hmm. You can find something. Laurel, how, um, how engaged are people who follow you on Instagram? L-A-R-E-L-L, -L -L, look her up, Laurel H follow you on Instagram, people want to learn. How um, how do you continue to make cultivation accessible for people who want to learn how to do it? I volunteered. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, well, I use YouTube a lot. I have YouTube videos. And yeah, Instagram, I get a lot of engagement because this right now is such a movement. There are so many people interested in doing this themselves in their closet, in their bedroom, and everybody wants to know how. They, and I'm, I'm learning that education is such a key piece to this whole thing right now, getting more and more people educated on how to do it properly. And, and I am finding so much engagement just constantly, questions of, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I make this happen? What I get pictures all the time. What's happening here in my tub? Can you identify this mold for me? <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's quite a fascinating position to be in at this time in this world. With mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doma, how many classes have you, can you count how many workshops you've had or classes you've had? Uh, workshops, we've only had a few. Um, I mean, we're on there every day. Uh, we have monthly projects that we do. Sometimes they take months to do, but we get a new one every month, which is fun. We're really getting into a groove with that now where like every month we're all doing the same project and testing together, research together, cool. which is amazing having like 30, 40, 50 people all doing the same thing instead of just yourself. Okay, so t tell us more about that. Pretend like I'm not completely understanding it. So you have an online platform. It's Patreon subscription. Okay. Uh, there's various tiers, and the top three tiers um, are all part of that projects and the Discord. And um, I make art and send it out, and nice slides you can look at under the microscope, you know. But so so you're all in on the same substrate with the same spores, starting the same day. Yes, I mean there's different level tiers. So some people get a little more than others, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. and we also have rewards program that we're impl implementing now. It's actually built on blockchain. Magicmyco.com? M no, actually it's MycoCoin. MycoCoin. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think we're all actually using the same substrate. I was going to say that. Yeah. Okay. No, we're all doing different. Everybody's doing it a little different. Everybody's doing it their own way, but it's the same spores. It's the same strain. The same genetics. Same genetics. And then at the end, tell me what the, tell me what the testing is like. Oh, it's, it's really a project that we just started uh, doing, but um, I, I mean, it's been great. They send me back spore prints and, uh, you know, clean spore prints that I could use. And we, we find the good stuff. We eliminate the bad. 
this was this is great this isn't you know maybe we should stick with this uh, as far as like the different um we're just mainly testing genetics you know and everybody's doing it differently and that's how we're finding different uh data on different varying factors like uh, substrates and uh, environments and mm -hmm. i find water to be a huge part of everything uh water quantity quality um everything about it the charge the ph all of it uh, yeah all of it. Patreon subscribers probably know what that pH is supposed to be, too. Um, I want to open up for some questions and uh, see where that leads us. Does anybody have a, a burning question for our panel? Talking about genetics, talking about cultivation. Is there something you want to know? Yes, sir. So you mentioned that testing would probably be a good evidence to get on as to like the I'm sport, your spores are a great business if you're a genetics guy, but I wouldn't be reselling somebody's spores. That's just me. What, I guess my question is, what, what is the current active uh, successful methods of testing to decide, to decide their potency or any kind of testing that, mm. that uh, mushroom go through? So it would be HPLC? HPLC, liquid chromatography. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the challenges, the challenges around that, I mean, it would be silly. It would be short-sighted maybe to start a testing business that's just for psilocybin and psilocin. I mean, the the probably the smart move would be a, a cannabis testing that that's, expands. That's the most concrete data, and it comes back with the the most uh, amount of data. I mean, there's there's like things you could do at home, like on a cheap to to see, like you know how you weigh your starting mm -hmm. uh, against your you know crystals that you get at the end, and then you could do some math and figure out maybe what your psilocybin content is so it would which be, psilocin is what we get high off of Psil psil psilocybin converts to psil psilocin in the body that's why some of these numbers with the high psilocin count that's our, so think about it your body doesn't have to work your liver doesn't have to work so much it's going to go right through the blood brain barrier and go right to your head mm -hmm. so there are things and and those are only we're only currently testing for two things in the mushrooms and so that's why i'm saying you know, next year we're going to be testing for five years. The year after that, we're testing for five things, for 15 things. Um, I think, Daisha, do you think we're going to be just be finding out what are the, what are the other alkaloid contents? What are yeah, we I think that's important. Um, there's another thing I want to mention about the HPLC uh, quickly to close that up. And I just want to say that um, right now it's almost not accessible. You have companies that do do it for the cannabis industry, um, and they do it. It's not affordable. Most of the people cultivators of mushrooms are everyday people, moms, therapists, and they don't have money to get HPLC tested. And right now with the cannabis industry, it's $10,000 a pop mm. to get the cannabis tested. And that's not affordable, but you have um, a new company, Oakland Hyphae and mm. Hyphae Labs. Hundred bucks. Yeah. Mm. Um, who have made it accessible. They put it on a sliding scale, and really their top dollar was $150 to get That's it tested. Fantastic. But then they even brought that down even further for people for who had depth, nothing. Yeah. And so I think in the beginning we need more of that. Um, and it's just a beautiful community, again, the mushroom community, where you uh, see a need, you open it up, and you just make it happen because it needs to happen. You know, we need to get that tested. Mm -hmm. But I also then, I forgot what the second thing was because I wanted to close that up, but... Think about it while Coleman's asking yeah, a question. Yeah, think about it. You think about it and tell me. Never. I specifically wanted to talk about some of the uh, some of the techniques that you use for isolation, and not just isolation, rather, but um, the combination of genetic material. I don't know if it was the blue stereo, the tidal wave, or the penis at one of them. I remember hearing stories about the use of. Uh, I mean, sometimes there's. They could be, be, be using these words wrong, but like they could happily plant them onto an already established mycelium net uh, to get some genetic exchange there, as well as breaking some of these barriers with rattlesnake venom. That, the the rattlesnake venom thing, I think, is a total myth. I don't know who made that up. And if they do do it, like I would really love to see it. Please call me up. I use special antibiotic agar that makes it grow slow and in place. It breaks down that cell wall. So anastomosis can happen. Now, anastomosis, when, when spores drop, it, it happens everywhere. You get thousands of new strains without even trying. It's right there. So what we do is we do it in a very educated guess kind of way where it's like we know exactly what we're doing and what we isolate to the point of monoculture and then fuse them on special agar 
and then we finish it off in uh, LC after that for a while before it even gets tested. Well, we test it on agar first to see the uh, fruiting capabilities. We fruit it right off on agar, doesn't need any other nutrients, and it'll fruit. Um, yeah, so if you want your stuff to stay 0 0.00, make sure it's in sterile water, nothing else. Um, so how many people, I completely understood everything that Doma just said about isolating a strain. That was brief. You want a little, I, that was really quick. Okay, We're I got gonna a get couple into hands. That tomorrow and I got a couple other. hands, but, but I'm going to say it back in the way that I understand it, and then you're going to correct where I mess up. This is going to happen. Go ahead. Okay. There's going to be wrong I'm things. Ready. I'm ready. Bring it There's on. There's going to be wrong <laughs> things. So um, we're going to, uh, we have mycelium. So you guys have all seen agar plates that are all the like pretty little stringy things. And you see the little punch in the middle and then it all goes out. He's going to put two of those on the same plate in a kind of agar. See, I already wrong. Did you see it like this? It's okay. He's, he's tracking. Um, in a kind of agar that's going to cause the cell walls to break down so that when those strands kind of go over each other, they can mix together. Correct. That is absolutely <laughs> correct. correct. However. Absolutely correct. However. I mean, you can, you can go to page um, 27, Mushroom Cultivator book by Paul Stamets, and you see he puts four multispores on a plate and see what happens. Some spots are going to cross. you got to watch the way it fruits, and then if something different comes out, it is because you say it is by the looks, and then you clone it, and then you say that's your new thing. That's not really the right way to do it. Um, we, then, well, it's the method I use. So I mean, but then again, there is no right or wrong way there, to do this. There is so many different ways, and we've experimented with different things. We've um, With single spores, like you would, like you would um, do with plants, I guess you would take seeds and um, let them pollinate each other and then you got to grow that and then take those seeds or you could get clones and graft them together okay it's very very similar even though it's a different totally different because of the the um basidio micata has it's a basidio spore so that means for each basidia there are four spores and not all of them are compatible some of them will mate but they'll be illegitimate matings and they won't even be able to fruit so when you did, you do guys it, know that all this was happening with spores? Was all of this on your radar? And we're going to get into the this four tomorrow. Spores and the compatibility. It's so, a lot. So if you you can do it from spore, but it's not a very reliable way. What we, what we like to do is we like to isolate, clone, find a thing that we already know that we already like, and then we'll segment that to the point of um, monoculture. I think the word monoculture and monocarion is very often misconfused. Uh, a monoculture can be dicaryotic. That's why it fruits so nice. Otherwise, it wouldn't. Could you define monokaryotic and dicaryotic? Monokaryotic is primary mycelium, and it doesn't fruit on its own. It needs a mate. And uh, once it gets together with another monokaryotic strain, it'll create a dicaryon. And those dicaryons are what will fruit for you. So that's, uh, that's what you want to go with. And the easiest way to get to, like, Great isolations is clone like the greatest thing that you like. You clone it and then work from your clones. And there's ways to splice that and to, like I said, polish it off in LC, which grows in 3D, right? Because agar is on a two-dimensional surface. LC. Liquid, liquid culture. culture. Okay. LI is liquid inoculant, which is sterile water. LC is liquid culture, which has nutrients in it, so it will grow inside. That's the one that you put in the Uncle you Ben's can, bag. You can you can so take like, agar, you can take scrapings, or even um, throw throw a non-contaminated agar sample in like an Etterbach machine or a blender with several water and make syringes that'll test 0.00. .00. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people know that yet. Mm -hmm. Laurel, does this make you want to go home and grow new more strains? It does. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever cultivated tidal wave? No. I Do you want not. to? I know a guy. I'm fascinated now. Yeah. yeah. Tell me what tell me what it makes you what what you're thinking about. I just see you back there nodding <laughs> and I want to hear what's happening. Every time I I have cultivated a new strain, it's always fascinating to learn it and to get to know it. And the fascinating thing is as Doma is very experienced with, you can have the same strain that will grow very, very different depending on how it's isolated, and what you've done to it. And so someone will give you a strain and say, yeah, this, this produces great full flushes every time, but depending on 
how you actually cultivate it and what love you give to it depends on what's actually going to happen with it. But yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's fun experimenting with different ones. What do you think, Daisha? Um, I just remembered what I was going to talk about mm. before, and she reminded me because it was about something she said before that um, people who are looking to grow it consistently always look for time, and we do. There, there are strains that we have, um, Trinity being one of them, Tidal Wave, and where we focus on how long does it take to fruit because time and the turnover of your badges is really important. It's not just consistency or the potency. If the potency is lower, you would just then increase your dosage. As long as the dose is, uh, it's, the potency is consistent throughout, then the next big thing is how long does it take? So time is important. Mm -hmm. A tidal wave four, you said also, mm -hmm. a very quick um, to colonize and to fruit. And um, I think that's really important when you're just trying, because you all, you have patience. You have people that um, are waiting for the medicine a certain amount, whether it be you give them enough for a month or whatever. And so you have to be able to fill all of that and to be able to. And so you need consistency in the time it takes to. And so that's what I wanted to say. And another important reason to do the research and the testing and, and to create strains and think about mm -hmm. what are we trying to do with this strain is, is about time, too, especially um, when used Work not so much commercially, but for in the treatment of. Can I follow up on that? Please. Um, yeah, so like the Tidal Wave 2 that won the competition, it was grown on um, a manure-based nutrients in, in the substrate, and it won, mm -hmm. obviously. The, the Tidal Wave 4, which is also a Tidal Wave isolation, came in around 10th place, but it was only grown on core, no nutrients. The uh, Trinity, which is usually very strong, um, also was grown on just core, so like, like a great, ex and to her point, the one that won takes 60 days to make the fruit that won the competition. I had three flushes of Tidal Wave 4 in that time, which gave me like, uh, maybe I, I'm guessing 10 times the amount. And it's right there, it's right up there. It was fruit on just core. Uh, I'd be very curious to, as a test in the next psilocybin cup, I, I have the guts to just do the TW2 on just core and the Trinity and the TW4 on a on manure-based one and see what the difference is. You know that you are really, really good at your job when you enter cups with experiments because you just <laughs> I would like to do this on the side for like, $100 a pop. <laughs> you but. just like, maybe next time I'll do it like this and see if it's all right. I want to submit like, all that's on confidence. the side. That yeah. is confidence in your work and I love it. But like I will it. do that because he hasn't answered me yet, so yes. Do uh, we have any other questions in here? I don't want to ignore people. Yes, my friend right here. That's a good question. I guess t uh, the timing, it's just the timing. Um, marijuana just went legal in New York. And um, I don't know. Uh, I just think it's the right time. I mean, um, we've we gone through a lot in the past four years. Um, rather not talk about much of it, but um, I thought that this was important enough to come out and show my face to move the movement forward so that you guys can see exactly what's going on because it's about I think that word's important us. too it's a movement there's momentum a movement. here yeah you know and I think and that's we're trying to push it. it forward so we know there's risks and so there's a gamble right is the is there enough momentum where you can come out and start sharing this information and and the people who are are doing it be, you know and without getting you know put in prison mm -hmm. but we, we're just hoping that there's enough momentum right now Laura. yeah I've I feel like we're at a place where there's enough people in the world that are recognizing that it is actually beneficial. Those with money still stand in a place to try to protect their money and their ability to make more money. And those are probably going to be our biggest enemies here. The government, they're a big enemy, but those with money are the number one enemy. And I, 
I think education, like I say, is so key, just to educate people on what it really is and getting out there in the community and teaching people what it is. There are so many people out there that just simply don't even know what psychedelics do. And simply just having a conversation with your friend about them opens their mind. They talk with someone else. Next thing you know, they're trying it themselves and getting personal experience. And then the more people get personal experience and understand what oh, this really is, the more the better chance we're going to have. Yeah. I agree yeah. with that. I think that the conversation is really important. Um, conversation with, with people, because what do we think about with psychedelics? You know, you think of college students and experimentation and going too far and excess and just putting as much in your body as you can and seeing them, what happens. And you want to see aliens and travel to other planets. And uh, This is how moms think about their kids doing psychedelics. Like she's <laughs> yeah. reading my mail right now. <laughs> and I think it's important. I think it's important to start having the conversation with kids too, because there's a big difference between um, cannabis and mushrooms. Um, as opposed to meth and crack and other, you know, things. So if we start to differentiate and create a new language, drugs, and take it out of the uh, category of drugs and put it into its own category, maybe make up new words if we have to. You know, I had this conversation before with, with Anthony about we need to start uh, changing the words a little bit. And um, meaning instead of saying it's psychoactive or it's not psychoactive, you know, CBD and THC and, and use um, intoxicating because even CBD is psychoactive in that you have a change. Makes you feel good. Exactly. You get that euphoric, I feel mm -hmm. well, you know, mm -hmm. the general feeling of wellness. And so we just need to change, you know, psychedelics and, and the, all the words and the, and the meanings behind them and, and just start making new language for it and talking about it because you know, talking about it with your kids, talking about it with your coworkers and friends, and that's part of the momentum, I think. Donna? Yeah, and a lot of people are looking for help right now. A lot of people are having drug problems, uh, trauma, I mean, you name it, uh, opiate addiction. A lot of people are looking towards the psychedelics now. Um, I mean, even just to get into the hobby is very therapeutic for some people, just to grow itself, to watch the cycles, to read the moon and the stars in your work. And it, it's, it's really amazing. And um, yeah, I think people are sick of um, big government, you know, coming out with a pill for every element and, and oppressing us and um, giving us stuff that we don't need, bottles and bottles of stuff that we don't need. When something that grows out of the ground that we enjoy growing, that makes us happy to just even be around it in the same room with it as you're doing it and it's successful and you see it your baby coming to life. It's like- uh, Can anybody relate to that? <laughs> okay, there you are, there you are. It's, it's highly therapeutic in itself. And a lot of people have problems right now and they're looking for healing and they're looking for help, whether it's drugs or mental issues or uh, accident or trauma, and th this is the time. So uh, that's mm -hmm. why we're here. Um, I think that is a, a beautiful place to begin to wrap up the conversation. And I know that folks here are going to want to be in touch with you. So I'll start ladies first again. Lorel, would you tell everybody how to be in touch with you? I'm trying to think the best way. Probably my Instagram account, Mycelium Queen, is where I educate people. That's where I, that's where I hang out and watch you. So j join us. <laughs> Mycelium Queen. Uh, Laurel, thank you so much for being here. Daisha? I'm the same right now. Instagram is really the only way to get in touch with me. And um, I'm the Fungus Bunker. The Fungus Bunker. <laughs> My kids gave me that name. Mm -hmm. Go, Mama. Uh, yeah, Magic Myco uh, at Magic Myco. Magic Myco.com, Magic Myco on IG, Magic Myco on pa Patreon. You could also email me at doma at magicmicro.com. Um, I always respond to them emails. Uh, take Somebody this opportunity. Oh, 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 sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, magicmico.com. Magicmico, M-Y-C-O. Magic, M -Y -C -O. Magic, Doma, D-O-M-A at magicmico.com. 
Enjoy. Uh, Instagram's a great place. Watch what they're doing. Um, I just, I just want to appreciate you. I want to appreciate you. I appreciate you. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, Doma, Doma and his team and, and Daisha, um, traveled from New York to, to be here with us. Uh, it was no small feat. It was on very short notice and their moderators, not as organized as she should be. So they've been through a lot just to get here. And, um, it blesses my socks off because I'm going to say, five years from now when we're at psilocybin biz in Vegas and it's the biggest <laughs> show on the planet. I'm going to say, remember when we were at that panel with the first ever winner of the first ever psilocybin cup. So I just want to honor you guys for being here and the work that you're doing and the work that you continue to do. Thank you for and having us. I wish you um, all prosperity and good health. And um, I just want to appreciate you. And I bet you guys all do too. So let's say thank you. <laughs> Thank you.